Today's video is about folk etymology. I'm going to read from my book and you're welcome to read along. Folk etymology is a linguistics term for analogical reformation, morphological reanalysis and etymological reinterpretation where a reanalysis of a word's history or original form affects its spelling, pronunciation or meaning or any combination of those. Island in Old English was island and is not etymologically related to isle from Latin uh, insula. After island lost the G, some academic, <coughs> Webster if I recall correctly, uh, added the S thinking the root of the word was from Old French, il. Of course now il in French has a diacritic that replaces the S. Did you know that goodbye used to be a greeting and not a farewell? Thanks to linguist Oscar Tay's post on Quora, we know that bye has no meaning on its own. Later, goodbye, possibly from may God be by you, became the farewell goodbye. So bye got a new meaning. Over time, a set of letters may get a new meaning from a misunderstanding or mistranslation. In my ebook here, you can click on the link for more details about misnomers. Equally evident is that a word itself changed meanings sometimes completely. The word awful, for instance, used to be positive, literally full of awe, until it became quite the opposite and now it carries negative connotations. Ver, or man, used to mean something like person, which is why werewolf, literally man-wolf, retain the meaning. Whiff meant wife. Whiffman lost the F and became women, and then morphed to woman, both in sound and spelling. Human comes from Latin humanus, where the man has nothing to do with person, although male comes from Latin masculus, in which Old French was mal. Notice the S was dropped to mal with the diacritic. The male and female has nothing to do with masculinity, but is a diminutive mel. For the A in femina, etymologically unrelated to male. Interestingly, it also means that women, plural, is actually closer to the original pronunciation of woman. It explains why we don't pronounce the S in isle and island, because it never really was there to begin with. Here's another tale. And this comes from a book published originally in 1890 and republished in 1969 by Reverend A. Smythe Palmer, who says, and I quote, In our nursery tale, folk etymology has clothed Cinderella's foot with glass in the place of Menifer, generally believed that the substance of la petite pantoufle de verre in Charles Perrault's story Cendrillon, 1697, uh, was originally a kind of fur called fer. Fer. Note how that sounds like fur. A word now obsolete in French, except in heraldry, preserved in England as the name of the weasel ermine. And that some reciters or transcribers to whom the meaning of ver was unknown substituted the more familiar but less probable ver. So they misspelled it, of course, and now uh, Cinderella is doomed to wear glass slippers. Okay, so we can see how this mistranslation 
from ver glass in French change the the object. So actually, menifer uh, is a white fur used in ceremonial costumes traditionally. That uh, is now generally written miniver, which in itself is likely another corruption, thinking perhaps mini means little and was relevant to the size of the ermine or the slipper maybe but in any case he goes on to say and i quote it is by offsets of an old stock arising through ignorance or pronunciation originally that every language is frequently enriched and new modifications of thought unfolding themselves in the progress of society generate for themselves concurrently appropriate expressions. It must not be allowed to weigh against the validity of a word once fairly naturalized by use, that originally it crept in upon an abuse or corruption. Prescription is as strong a ground of legitimization in a case of this na nature as it is in law. The maxim fieri non debuit factum velet, which is what ought not to have been done is valid when done. Were it otherwise, languages would be robbed of much of their wealth. And universally, the class of purists in matters of language are liable to grievous suspicion as almost constantly proceeding on half knowledge and on insufficient principles. I really like how he's worded this. Um, what it means in sum is that the modification and the, the flux of language is something positive and we cannot always understand how things change, but um, we can also not rely on etymologists telling us that there are separate meanings of wor separate words because they're, they can't find the root. I think that things are simpler than we think they are, and there is much more relation than we expect to it. Monosemantic matching, which is there in Wikipedia, PSM is also known as popular etymology, analogical reformation, reanalysis, uh, morphological reanalysis, or etymological reinterpretation. So, uh, what would you call this fruit? I can picture you scratching your heads. It's actually a berry known as mock oranges. It also goes by hedge, horse, crap, apple. Notice this word here, um, nothing to do with crabs. Uh, monkey ball, monkey brains, yellow wood, and finally, Osage orange, thanks to Scottish explorer William Dunbar, who discovered it in, well, in the nation of Osage. So when French colonists in what's now known as the USA saw it, uh, they named it Bois d'Arc, bow wood or bodark or bodok. Hmm. Such words and phrases arise from a misunderstanding or mishearing, oftentimes from a foreign language. When a misnomer gets repeated, it becomes the dominant standard word. The French Chartreuse, which is a Carthusian monastery, uh, translated to charter house. French ch uh, choupic, adapted from a Bofin Choctaw language, anglicized as choupike. In Canada, a cloudberry is called bake apple, after the French phrase becapelle, literally a whatchamacallit berry. Renegades in the Anglican Book of Common Prayer, Psalm 68, derives from Latin renegatus, where we get renegade. 
Someone who abandons religious, political, or philosophical beliefs and accepts opposing or different beliefs. From the phrase, to run a gate. So I hope this was uh, edifying. This particular document comes from any number of these things. If you go in my ebook, which is 295 pages now, and expanding, you also get a link to the complete uh, folder ever English, which is basically now 2,092 notes. And they're all relevant to English. Um, much of it is, is good resources, uh, springboard for teachers of English. So I welcome you to go in the link in the comments and uh, have a look at the book. Thanks for watching.